always wanted to do this. We were up in the Uintas. Watch this. One cast into the pool. What, will he catch something on the first cast? Yes, he will. Did you seriously? Uh huh. That's amazing. It's a nice oh, look trail. at him! How cute. Well, don't say that. He was on his own way, minding his own business, could, trying to find somewhere really? nice for the winter. You never complained when I fed you trout. No, that was different. Oh, okay. Well, there it is, brook trout. That's the dangest Will thing. Will he have freedom or a frying pan? That's the question at the end of the show. You'll find out. Really? You're saying watch the show or the fish gets it? <laughs> you wish you have everybody vote. It could go either way. It's What's like The Bachelor. It's different. Way different than that. Way, way different than that. Trust Good morning. Me, much different. So Todd Nair and Morning Stream, GetPartDaily.com. I, I, just so many bizarre things today. I mean, obviously, all the stuff from should Hurricane Irma. Cam. Let's oh, yeah, we should camp. probably do that. The Morning Mountain Camp, it's brought to you by Black Diamond Experts, Electric Plumbing, Heating, and Air. I mean, all the stuff coming out of Florida for I, Hurricane Irma is still even nuts. don't know where to start. There's a whole thing about Mitt Romney running for Senate. We'll tell you about that. From, like, here, which is amazing. Decency quiz. Let's see if you pass. Oh, man. Somebody this is actually the worst. did a college course, right? Yeah, worst you're, thing you're not gonna ever. You're not going to pass. Worst thing ever. Bad oh, people. and this is so cool. They found out one of the major Viking warriors, one of the major heroes, right. was a woman. Awesome. With the horns and everything. This is going to be a great day. Very cool. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. All right, so uh, we should mention right off the bat that um, 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 iPhones. People oh, are lined the iPhone up. 8? People are lined up. I don't know what it is now. It's the supercharged uh, $1,000 phone. I want to go spend $1,000 that I don't have on a phone. That'd be great. And you love your phone. I, I mean, love and are, worship my phone. You would marry your phone. I would totally marry right. my phone. And I only have a 5. And this is the 12. You have a, like a 6 or I something. I have a 550 No, 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 something. no. You have a 6. 520. You have a 6 because you wanted to have a, a big What's, fancy camera app, used. so we had to get you another I one. I bought it used, and so I didn't pay that much. And so this, the only good thing about the $1,000 phone is the fact that uh, all the other phones would get recycled back into the market, and people can buy them used. That'll be good, yes. So Give me good. your fancier phone for less, and you but can have the $1,000 one. $1,000? Does it wipe your butt or something? $1,000. And what is wrong losing, with you today? Can you imagine losing it? Losing your phone? I think they have a lot of insurance plans now for those things. Good. Oh, for idiots? Yeah, it's, it no one's going to bother insure our phones. It but. falls in the garbage disposal or, or gets in the water. Don't you remember there was a story the, <coughs> the last time they, they had the new release, and this guy, I think... Oh, yeah. It, then ABC was there, and they were interviewing people, and this guy came out, and he's holding it, he's waving it, he's all excited, and he dropped it, and it shattered, literally, like on the doorstep of Apple. It was just like, oh, honey. Still had one foot in the building. Yeah. It was so the funny. saddest thing ever. All right, so let's go. I've got a story that I want to share with you. And this is a this is a lesson. This is a lesson for everybody. Oh, the outrage. I mean. So, yeah, this is going on. This went on um, because of the hurricane coming in. And at Florida State University. It was a wonderful idea. The university came out and they said, you know what, to our students and our faculty, um, we have parking structures that are made of concrete, and why don't you bring your cars down for the hurricane so that they'll be okay? The college, we can protect them and they won't get flooded because we're higher up. College and, students don't have a lot of money in a lot of cases, and they just have poopy old cars, and you want to, they want to protect them. So they opened the parking structure, anybody who wanted to come and, and save their vehicle. And it was a wonderful it's thing. It's a nice thing. Except for this. And except for Tallahassee. Uh, they have a car dealership. An uh, Infinity car dealership. Uh, yeah, Infinity, and they took all the spaces. They seriously had all their mechanics and their employees move all of their brand new cars in there, and they immediately filled up the entire thing so there was no room for any of the students or the faculty to park their cars. And there was just this line of all these shining brand new Infinities, and it's all like, parked. you suck. And evidently, everybody did think that, and everybody went on Facebook. Oh, and then also in Yelp <coughs> and, and Yelp Yahoo and, and Google. Google. Yeah. And they gave them a one rating, and that's where they ended up with. And so they were like, here you go. And so basically what happened is they got trashed for being jerks. It was hysterical. Anyone at FSU knows there's not enough parking places for the students, let alone the public. It feels wrong that Napleton Infinity took advantage of these spots when thousands of Tallahassee citizens and evacuees thousands. needed a safe spot for their car thousands. during the storm. Napleton cares more about their cars than the people in the city. I think that was a given. So one point it one was star. brutal. Yeah, they had to take all the rating stuff off Facebook, all the rating features, because it just trashed them. Way to take advantage of FSU. Clearly, you value your cars over people. Very poor business move. 
And Infinity, we're very sorry we asked permission. And since we help FSU with events and funding, they said it would be okay. <laughs> Please don't penalize us. Your bad surveys will really hurt us. Yeah, that's the point. So what happens now? What happens with their reviews? With Yelp and stuff, do they go away? No, they... I mean it, it's all based on an algorithm. I mean, it depends on how many goods and bads you get, and then it sifts through and it, it you know gives the gradient of how many goods and bad reviews, and kind of puts it in the middle and starts listing them in order of what there's more of. And in this particular case, oh. Napleton's going to have a boatload of zero stars and one stars for quite a while. That's horrid. But you were wrong. You're bad people. Well, you know, it is funny, though, because if you took a look at they it, have actually, assurance. they actually did have several other ratings before <clears> this, and and even after that, where there are people going, you're right, they do suck, because oh. I got my car there, and it was horrible. <laughs> so people were still joining and going, yeah, you're right, they did, they are horrible. So, so it was very funny. And, and they're also saying, consumer awareness here, uh, they're also saying that the flood cars from uh, Houston will be hitting the market soon. Over a million, they and say. And so you really want to inspect, because the computer systems have been underwater, and, and sometimes you can't tell, because they've cleaned the cars out so nicely. It's really interesting. They said, yeah, Carfax said uh, you have to get get a report, then take it to the mechanic and make him look. There's, I guess, three or four different specific warning signs. Right. But they say even if it works fine for now, they said once it's underwater, it literally rots from the inside out. Yeah. It's, and uh, so it's not it's not going to last. We went to Oklahoma when they had these uh, F5 uh, tornadoes, and along with tornadoes come thunderstorms, and along with thunderstorms comes hail. We walk through a car dealership. Oh, I felt so badly for So them. we're talking golf ball size hail, which I don't know why they choose golf balls, but they do. Uh, and there was a, a horrid... Ding, 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 ding. And every car was dimpled like a golf ball. Yeah. Every car I mean, had, brutally. had, a, had a, a hole, a dent in it this far apart, if not more. Broke windows out. They have insurance. They didn't park someplace where students couldn't. Yeah. Okay, Alan Hansen, this is cool. He's here from Utah. Um, he sent his wife and his kids back from Florida. Um, Does he live there? When they were warning and they did the evacuations. Well, he owns a Texas Roadhouse. He, oh, right, right. He's, he owns one of the franchises right. down in Bradenton, and he's like I, on the Gulf Coast, and he says, like, I can't leave right. because here's why. And I love this man for this. Number one, he told his employees, you're all welcome to come and stay here. Right. It's a gigantic place, and I guess they stuck, they stuck sleeping bags and stuff in there. Right. And then he opened his doors to people who, uh, evacuees and, and uh, rescue personnel and said, if you're rescue personnel coming in, I'm going to feed you for free. Don't nice. worry about it. Nice. So he felt like he couldn't leave, and he couldn't leave his people there. So I just thought that was amazing. So I'm, I'm interested to find out what happened because the last time they checked in with him was about 1 a.m. yesterday. But I just thought he was the sweetest person. So his wife and his kids are here going, hope dad's doing good. He's cooking his butt off, but I love, sure. But I love the fact that he's like, no, I had, I had 130 employees and only half of them could evacuate. Wow. So I had to have him come and stay with us. If you remember after Katrina in New Orleans, uh, the, the restaurant community got together. It was wonderful, and yeah. They and they helped each other out with equipment. They found the high ground restaurant. They found the ones that could open first, and then they did this, uh, where they fed uh, the volunteers and yeah, stuff Yeah, and they like combined that, all their efforts. It was amazing. Which is very cool. Um, speaking of the hurricane... Um, uh, Kristen Bell. Oh, she's so adorable. I Tell can't it, even stand in case, her. In case they don't know who she is. Kristen she Bell. Done? She she was in Frozen. Um, and uh, obviously she was adorable. She's done a whole bunch of different things. If you've ever seen her on Ellen, there's that classic clip of her. She's madly in love with sloths. And she is married to Dax Shepard. And he was going to get a sloth for her birthday. And he filmed her. And she's just sobbing uncontrollably. Because what's wrong? She's like, I'm so happy. She, she, I know you have a sloth. It's the weirdest it's the adorable. reaction she has. But in any case, she was actually shooting something down in Florida, and she got stuck there along with everybody else. They had her up in a hotel, obviously, the film crew. And most people would be hiding out in their room and getting room service and stuff. Right. She was adorable. She went out. She, she has to be. She's compelled. She checked in with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. She said, can I help? And she went to a couple of the refugee shelters, the you know, evacuee shelters. Right. She sang Frozen along with the kids. Let <laughs> it go. Let it go. And ran them through all the different songs. Oh. Funny. And it's so cute. You can see one scared. of the officers there, yeah. and they're like all dancing and singing. And to make me adore her even more, she right. found all the elderly people because they'd stacked a bunch of them at the hotel right. to take care of them. And she would sit with all of them at their tables every day for all the meals, and she would talk about them and and talk about their kids. And there's the oh sweetest picture of her holding this nana and giving her this massive hug. But I just love the concept. I mean, look how cute she is. 
and she kept putting up all of these little. She looks like she's little, twelve in this picture. Isn't she darling? She's an adult. And she and you know poor Dax is back in California going, how you doing, honey? But she would put up all these little hurricane tips like this is a really good time to That's fill so your funny. bathtub with water because you know she has a massive Twitter following. She's got like you know fifty million people. Right. So it was it was just adorable to me that she would be that awesome during such a rough time. Awesomeness rises to the top like cream. Totally awesomeness. There is a question in Utah. What will happen? What will happen? Will Mitt Romney run for the Senate? Mm. Orrin Hatch, will he go for an eighth term? Mm. Actually, Orrin Hatch already made a statement that if Mitt Romney was going to run, he would retire. But he hasn't retired yet. And so what we have is a conflict. Is he going to retire? Is Mitt going to run? Or is he going to run again and Mitt Romney gets to run a 7-Eleven or something, right? Well, one of our neighbors, Jenny Wilson, who if you remember is Mayor Ted Wilson, uh, Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson's daughter. and She's also um, active in politics. She's going to be running for senator. And I was kind of excited about her, but I'm pretty much sure that if Romney runs, that's going to trample everybody. <clears throat> Seriously, you don't think they've made a decision already? Are um, you that They're vague? all paying, playing they coy. Are, they mm. are so know what's going to happen. They so know that Mitt Romney is going to run. They so know. And it's like, it's like, oh, uh, Hatch, are you going to run? I'm not sure. You're not sure? Really? Well, like, Mitt we, Romney. Well, you know, I, I, I think it would be interesting. Really? They haven't had any comment from him, just from his camp. Yeah. Look at him, though. He looks like he's an active here's guy. The problem. He looks like here's, he could take here's it. Here's the problem. He's 70. Look at him. Yeah, but look at him. He's unnaturally young looking. So we want to elect a vampire to the Senate? <laughs> sure, he doesn't reflect in a mirror, but look at him. Yeah, but he's a, that's wealthy, 70. he's a wealthy, charismatic vampire, and I think that's the important thing to remember here. Wealthy, charismatic Like vampire. they haven't decided already. Really? Yeah, and I'm when, sorry, but Senator Hatch last, is 84. He's got to go take a and break. When's the last time you saw a politician be wishy-washy? <laughs> Except for Chitman's. Um, besides All the that. time? Yeah. Constantly? Constantly. No, it so was seriously. It's based on one report from a, a relatively small publication, so I'm interested to find out what happens. But Of course he's going to run. It. Of course he's going to do it. Hatch even said he'd be a good replacement. It's over. It's done. It's decided. I bet you a Coca-Cola that uh, they're going to do it. Not yes. everyone, just her. You know I don't drink soda. I know. Okay. If, you had, if you'd bet me like a pie, I would have been more interested. No. Fine then. Okay, we'll just go to Daisy then in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you, of course, by Fink and McGregor Mortgage is made simple. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, um, you can take a four-minute mortgage challenge and find all kinds of different options, and they'll even call you by the next business day. Also, by All Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air, 24-hour service. John will always be there, allutahplumbing.com. Daisy, my dear, what is going on? Hello, everyone. Here's what's making headlines Tuesday, September 12th on gephardtdaily.com. The Weber School District is apologizing and the teacher is on administrative leave after Roy High School students were asked to reveal explicit information about their sex lives. The questions were posed in a junior level class as part of a lesson on risky behavior in dating. The course includes instruction in human sexuality and requires parental consent for students to take it. The school sent home a letter extending an apology to both students and parents for the survey, which was actually based on a 1981 column by Dear Abby. UtahPolicy.com says former GOP presidential candidate Mitt Romney is preparing to run for the U.S. Senate, but only if Orrin Hatch retires. The 83-year-old Hatch has already announced plans to run, but political insiders say the decision is not a done deal. Hatch was first elected to the Senate in 1976, and recent polls show him trailing potential Democratic challenges. The same polls show Romney ahead in the same races. Seismologists in Utah and around the country are monitoring a swarm of earthquake activity in southern Idaho. In the course of the last 10 days, 260 quakes have been reported, and many were felt across parts of northern Utah. The biggest quake so far had a magnitude of 5.3 and was centered in Soda Springs, Idaho, about 110 miles north of the Utah border. Scientists at the University of Utah say that quake, which was felt in Salt Lake City, was relatively rare, about a once-in-10-year event. 
And time now for a look at the Wasatch Front forecast, where temps will swing from the low 90s to the low 80s in the next few days. It's all part of the grand cooling trend as we slide into fall. There's also an increased chance of rain throughout the week. Overnight lows in the 60s. That's it for now. For more local headlines 24-7, go to GetHotDaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you. All right, so a lot of people are getting ready. They're starting to think about maybe perhaps the winter is coming up. And I don't mean a Russian or anything, but they're talking about snow this weekend above 8,000 feet. Now, one thing you got to think about in the fall is you know, you've got to put your sprinklers to bed. You've got to you've got to make sure that your outside faucets are taken care of. This is just one of the things that's going on with all Utah Plumbing and allutahplumbing.com. Right now, they're still working on sprinklers. Right now, they're still working on ACs. Right now, they're still working on furnaces. And by the way, when the fall hits, they're going to get really busy. Why not have your furnace checked out now? And that way, you know it's safe for your family. They can come out. They can check your hot water heater, drain it, make it last longer. They can make sure if you're having sewer problems, they can check that too because they got a camera that goes down the sewer line. Ew. If you want someone to handle all this for you, put this in your phone right now, allutahplumbing.com. It's All Utah Plumbing at 801-652-4755. All right, so you got snooze out of uh, Park City. This is pretty cool to me. Uh, DACA has really scared a lot of people, especially DACA. the kids. And if you remember, of course, um, we're talking about the fact that uh, President uh, Trump wanted to uh, get rid of the deferred action for childhood arrivals uh, beneficiaries. For kids um, who were brought to the country yeah, when they were young. Yeah, like right. in their mother's stomach or there were two. And, and basically what this chance gave is, is a chance to achieve citizenship by going every two years. You have to reapply. You're allowed to 800,000 kids you're allowed stepped to go to up, school. Stepped up. Yeah. Went and signed up for this, which is cool. Um, and so we have some spectacular examples here in Utah yeah. of, of kids who are going for their like doctorates, mm -hmm. and they're doing just amazing things. And right. so the, all of this now is in jeopardy. And uh, Park City was really concerned about this, and so uh, the Park City School District actually adopted a resolution, a safe schools resolution, on Monday, where they said we will keep the we will keep the immigration status of every student private. Right. We won't allow yeah. any inquiry from the federal government <clears throat> or from anybody else to find out what their status is. Right. Which I thought was amazing. They said that. It's our job, to, it's our responsibility to protect our kids. That's great. And so we can yes. add that to the list. Of? Chicago. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of different cities that are doing Chicago that right now. Chicago came out. You know, and the board president said we thought that it was very important for us to show support for our students. Their immigration status is not something that anyone should concern themselves with. And uh, by the way, if you are uh, maybe e either a beneficiary for DACA or you um, know somebody is and you're really worried about what's happening, um, there's been a big flood of immigration attorneys here in Utah, along, actually along the Wasatch Front, who said, we'll go down to the um, we'll go down to the consulate, the Mexican consulate, and we'll give you free legal advice. We'll just go through oh. all the paperwork with you and get some ideas See how it goes. and talk about what you want to okay. do. And so all this week, and that's um, 9 a.m. to noon, Monday through Thursday, um, they'll be available there. It's all free services, and they'll be happy to go through all of it with you. It's all confidential, and they'll, nice. they'll help you decide what steps you want to take. You know, because it puts a lot of people in jeopardy. They have no idea what's well, happening. Well, it changes your life, yeah. your entire life. Everything that you'd planned for in your trajectory is now gone. So, I mean, at this point, my goal, hope is that the Congress, U.S. Congress, is actually going to take a look at this and then uh, create something that's feasible that allows these kids to continue. Right. And that really was the push on both, from commentary I heard from senators on both the Republican and the Democratic side of, okay, <coughs> Trump's announcement and decision makes us have to push this to the forefront to make Let's a decision. Let's figure out what's going to go on. <coughs> uh, I have to make a, a ruling uh, right now. Uh, we're talking about Christopher's, the big thank you for you guys watching. Uh, we're sending people to go uh, eat at Christopher's Steakhouse. And uh, <coughs> here's the correction. Uh, no, my sister in New Hampshire cannot win, nor Stephanie. Sorry, guys. Sorry, because that's a long commute. Unless you want to come out and visit, then we can't give it to you because you're relative. Yeah, I'm sorry. we could just this, go there with them th then. Those steaks won't be yours. That glass of wine won't be yours. Ah, sorry. Won't be ours either, so there you go. Wow, you're mean spirited. Beautiful place to eat. If you have never eaten there, by the way, um, book it. Go down, check it out. The atmosphere is great. The, the wait staff, unbelievable. The food is exquisite. The food is to die for. Nothing so, bad. I can't say anything bad about that's it. That's because it's perfect. Yeah, it is perfect. So, okay, so here's the deal. All you have to do is enter on one of our Facebook pages. If you're watching the show at this point, then, and you make a comment, we'll know that you were watching the show. We were talking about Christopher's, and it will automatically enter you. You can do this at our Todd and Aaron Facebook page, Get Part Daily Facebook page, or Get Part Approved. It's just that simple, and then you're all done. 
All right, so coming up next, we're going to talk about hurricane hounds. And free corn. And free it's Kurahara corn. Free Corn Day. It's Tuesday. It's coming up next. Experts. Electric, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. You'll be glad you called an expert. Fink and McGregor. Mortgage is made simple. Make sure you go to fink-mcgregor.com and try out their four-minute mortgage program. It's incredibly easy to find out whether you qualify. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at GephardDaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. You want to join us for it? 11 to 7 going on today. The only seven-day-a-week farmer's market, by the way. Along the Wasatch Front. We're going to be there at noon, by the way, All eating right. corn. Come on down. It's got, I mean, it's unbelievable, though. It's got a billion different made-in-Utah products. Everything from salsas to cookies to, Peaches, I mean, to beef. Tomatoes, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. All this stuff. If you're a canning person, this is a place to get your crate, crates and cases of stuff. Yeah, Ali um, Kuahara is just the most adorable kid. And he's like, runs this entire massive market. And he's about to start these big uh, pumpkin patches that will tell you about that are so cool. They're themed. I mean, it's amazing. Well, actually, start them in the spring where you're supposed to um, and plant them. Uh, the corny picks, they're in the height of corn season right now, hence the celebration today, every Tuesday. And they roast them over the, they roast uh, them over the grill with the husks so on them, pull it back, and then they slather it. Is it fresh? It. Is it close? Yeah, Ogden. That's where their fields are. 8565 South State Street in Sandy. 8565 South State Just Street in Sandy. It. We will be there. Don't have to bring Come your own butter. Us. It'll be great. It'll all be there. All right, you want to tell me something good? This is a wonderful one. I, I don't know why this one touched me so much, but if there was an officer who saw a woman on the side of the road. She was doing the standard thing, holding a sign, asking for help. And um, ordinarily, a lot of police will either pull over and say, hey, you can't do that here. Or it's, a, it's illegal to be uh, on the side of the highway, I for, believe. For someone to give money out of a car. Yeah. Now it is. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, it's the safety issue of, of stepping out into traffic right. and getting hurt. Um, but this is Massachusetts State Trooper Luke Bonin. He had just left court, so he had his nice suit on. Mm -hmm. And so he took a look at her and he thought about it. He went to the closest restaurant he could find, got two takeout lunches, and then drove back. Right. Uh, and sat down with her in the grass on the median, and they had lunch together. Uh, Lynn Murphy was homeless. She's a mother of four. And when she, he, she saw mother the of four. she saw the cruiser pull up, she's like, "Oh crap! He's gonna arrest me." There's right. the picture. Isn't that sweet? He's gonna arrest me for panhandling. Instead, he said, "Look, I've got I've got you know ham or I've got chicken salad. Which one would you like?" Sat down. They both had lunch. Uh, he never told his superiors or the fellow troopers about the good deed, um, but he went through some of the service ideas with her and uh, helped her, picked her, you know, took her back to her where the kids were, um, got them into a shelter, right. kind of took care of them and chucked on them for a week or two. Nobody knows who snapped the picture. They sent it in anonymously to the Massachusetts police saying, I wanted you to know what one of your troopers did and how amazing I thought it was that he took the time to be kind to this woman instead of just ticketing her or giving her, you know, get off, get her, go yeah. away. And I just... One at a time. I thought that was gorgeous. One at a time. And so they put it up and they said, Yes, Trooper <clears throat> Bonin, we know you do not want to expect publicity. This is on their Facebook page. We know you didn't want to be noticed, but you were, and uh -huh. the job is proud of gotcha. you. Gotcha. Gotcha. I thought that was cool. Hurricane hounds. Okay, Hurricane explain. hounds. Uh, first of all, um, dogs are meeting. They're meeting from Houston. They're meeting Florida dogs. <laughs> Comparing accents. Your southern accent's different right. than my southern accent. Uh, and uh, so basically what's happening is the Texas dogs uh, were being adopted. And matter of fact, two shelters here uh, were taking dogs in. Mm -hmm. And now, and they're up for adoption because they don't have a chip and they can't, there's no way they're going to find. And there's there's just right. a huge rate of these pets because a lot of them, it's either the last thing that people think about or maybe they've run off because they're scared or there's not room, they can't take them to the shelter. And they, and they, they kind of like... Plucking them out of the yeah, water, plucking them out of, uh, off of car hoods. I mean, they were and just roofs like, and yeah, yeah. It was and so, so they made the effort. They made the effort and stuff to uh, find everybody. And now what they're doing around the country is uh, there's a company, there's a group uh, that saves dogs, and they have them transported, and they volunteers transport them to mm -hmm. all these different shelters. And here in them. Utah, no more homeless, no more homeless pets. And right. uh, actually, the Cache County Humane Society also took pets. So right now, what they're doing is they're getting them all spayed and neutered. They're making sure they're all set up. They have their vaccinations. They're chipped, and then they're going to start a super adoption. Um, I think it's the Monday of next week. Which is funny because Patrick, who's the boss here, um, he has a cat from Katrina. 
the most laid back animal you've ever seen. You would have thought it'd have to be all <laughs> Cause traumatized. Because he's, like, he's like, nah, I survived the hurricane. What else could happen? There's nothing um, else you can do to me. But he, once again, a cat was transported from New Orleans to Utah. He saw it. He adopted it. Well, my sister Julie, who works at the Humane Society, uh, said that they actually, they were contacted and they said, we can take your cats. Let us know when you're ready. And cats, I guess, it takes longer to transport. So if you are looking, if you'd like to help with the kitties from uh, Houston and from Florida, they'll be coming into Salt Lake City pretty soon as well. Two stories about the hurricane. First of all, um, there was a couple who who was, uh, who, who was uh, vacationing in, uh, in, I think it was Puerto Rico, or one of the islands, uh, and the island changed. And they didn't, because they were on vacation, they, you turn everything off, right? And they didn't hear about the hurricane. <laughs> So they're sitting That's on the, the beach problem. going, not crowded today. And this is pretty nice. <laughs> people running around cases of water. And basically, like up to a day before, and they made... It's getting kind of cloudy. They, they made, where's the staff of the hotel? <laughs> they made no attempt to leave. That's hysterical. And it was just like they just... Wouldn't that be, almost be like willful, willful ignorance at that point? They're like, right? I really will not listen to anything at all. I mean... And then I, and I think of the people in the 1800s, you know, when they have no idea what's coming. And they're just like fishing going, yeah, it's getting kind of dark. Anyway, the story being is the big story right now is uh, blackout. Six million people in the state of Florida are without power. Now, they're talking about the keys and they're talking about it could be a month. And, and, they, and they destroyed the water supply line that yeah, goes they, down to the they, keys they, too they where they get their water. That. They're working on that. But, but we have a friend, Paul Castronova, a radio buddy uh, down in Miami. Mm -hmm. And when... Uh, it was it Andrew or Ka I think it was Andrew. Andrew came through. Anyway, um, he lived in Miami. He, and he had just a, decimated the He had city a nice time. house. He had a, a strong house. He had hurricane glass. He had, had all these stuff. He had shutters and stuff. And so it came through. So he said, yeah, I'm going to stay. Uh, it decimated his entire area um, to the point where um, he did radio. He's a morning radio show like we did. Um, and it's one of your things. So you're like, I'm going to get there. I'm going to tell people where water is. You're going to get a medical, you're going to announce, you're going to help everybody through because you're part of the community. He couldn't find his way to work because there were no stoplights, there was no businesses, his donut shop flattened. There was, there was no, no street, so there was no points of recognition where he could turn or whatever, there were no street lights. It took him twice so as long back. to get to work. And this is at like 5 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. And one of the eerie things he said is, first of all, all your food goes bad. So they're telling where to get ice, you know, and stuff like that. This is what he's doing for the community, which is so rewarding. Um, but he was talking about laying in bed at night, and he never had his windows open, ever, because of air, air conditioning. And they were all open. And the only light he saw was the spotlight from police cars that were trolling around for looters. And there were very few standing buildings. And that's the way it was. He said it was like a scene out of Blade Runner. You remember the movie with Harrison Ford oh. where it's just intense and bizarre and dark and eerie. Right. And there's just these random lights that go. It, it was it, very much like that. And, and the blackouts and stuff. If you've ever been in one for, for a certain amount of time, you know what? It's hot, uh, camping. Camping's a great example. You have a cooler with ice. How long does the ice last? Is your food down to temperature, all that stuff. So you think of moms and dads trying to take care of their kids. Except for we can all get back in the car and we can drive down into the valley and then right. we can have a nice fridge waiting for us. But now they're they're having ice shipped in and that's being distributed. And they're and stuff. staying for up to a month and there's no gas right now because everybody right. filled up like crazy and staffed up, you know, gassed up so they could leave. We talked to some of our friends down there and they're saying it's a real adjustment trying to get used to it. And one of the biggest things is because there's no power, there's no video games. And what they have oh, now is, is families sitting in the lobbies of hotels just staring blankly at each other. They've never heard of a board game. <laughs> They've never heard of... If you would ever try to explain Monopoly or Risk to a millennial, they're like... What? And, the, and, the, and the parents going, what's your, what's your Where's name? Where's the button that what's I your, press? What's your name again? Why do you have so many pimples? How old are you now? Uh, no elevators, all stairs. I mean, it's, it's a change of life. It's something they'll never forget. But a lot of the people, a lot of the people in Florida have been through this, but <laughs> they're like, it's, it's hard. not the first time. It's a hard, hard thing to do. All right, um, the grizzly thing is so freaky. This was a Utah turn, guy. He turn, was up turn, hunting turn, turn. in Helena. Was it, was it Montana? Yeah, it was in Montana he was hunting. And uh, he was going around there bow hunting and uh, they came across a bear. See, I kind of respect bow this, hunting because to me is, it's this like this is a, a bear. It's like a fair fight. If you're bow hunting, it's like well, they weren't hunting for bears. I know, but what I'm saying, though, is, is if you've got a bow, at least it's a fair fight with something. For me, the ones where they've got, like, the night scope vision, and it's an AK-47, and they're spraying bullets through the trees. 
that one seems to me unfair somehow to go hunting with. But with a bow, it's like... You can be killed. So they're, I think they're going after elk. And so they're out there and they came over a, sec, oh, over a little ridge. And there he was. And the bear turned and charged him. Charged both the hunters. Um, this is a grizzly. This is a big bear. It's a grizzly. Basically, teeth and claws attached to death. Furry death. So basically, this guy's read the articles, and he said, the thing, first of all, came up and gave me a slash that took 90 stitches, which is a good sign. That means he's going to live, right? And so uh, and the, then he said, just like all the reports, he goes, I heard the crunching of my head. Because <laughs> the bears go after your head. He, his buddy, he, he had his bear spray, but he couldn't get to it in time. And so he, he was, like, trying to get his gun out so he could took shoot the bear. his gun out like this. The, the bear just went... And like knocked his head. I mean, more or less. Obviously, the gun went flying. His hand almost went flying too. And then he kept continuing to chew because you know it was like the crunchy outer coating. And it, he was going for that soft middle part inside. And this is when you have nice friends and you do take them, do take them hunting. And first of all, make sure they run slower than you. But here's the good part. Uh, the other guy had the big can of uh, bear spray on his hip, and he ran over. This is a friend. He ran over and sprayed the bear in his face. And the bear let loose, and they were able to escape. Now, you think of an escape, here's your escape. It's like limping. All right, here's your escape. So the bear attacked him for about 25 seconds. So they wrapped him. His friend had... He's really sweet. He goes, it could have been a lot worse. I'm like, not by much. His friend had, there's, there's stuff, there's a powder, and it's coagulant. And you put it, it's a powder, and you pour it on a wound, and it stops it from bleeding. So he had Boy, that. they were prepared. Yes, he wraps, <laughs> there was like planning for this. And then he wraps his head up in a, tur a turban kind of thing. And then they made their quick escape, which meant uh, an a hour and a half mile walk back to the mules, uh, four miles uh, back to their base camp, followed by a two-hour ride in a pickup truck to get to the hospital. Wow. We're racing you. We're racing you to the hospital. Okay, saddle up the mules. We're racing... He says, I, have, I, don't, I don't have, I've been hunting my whole life. I have no grievance against that bear. He was just doing what bears do. But guess who's applying for a bear permit next year? <laughs> I would have shot him just He's the same. got to. He's got to. That poor man. I just kept picturing whipping out the gun and having the bear go, <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, we're done here. Bear fight. <laughs> if Burgundy. only Ron Burgundy had been there. Right. It's true. All right. After that inspiring story, we have to go to people who are going to hell. Tell me. Not only bad people, but stupid people. All right, go ahead. In particular, Nicholas Dielstra of North Logan. Mm -hmm. He's a licensed drug rehabilitation counselor. He contacted the FBI That's because so nice. he believed he was being targeted uh -huh. in an online scam. And he said, so, hey, I've got to let you know what's going on. That's I'm cool. serious about this. Well, as they're going into his, his uh, information, they mm -hmm. realized that he was online in the first place to entice a teenage boy for sex. Oh, man. So he's been charged for sexual exploitation of a minor, so dealing in harmful materials for a minor, third-degree felonies. turned himself in, basically. More or less. He made contact with a 15-year-old boy in Craigslist, according to police. The two exchanged text messages about meeting up to have sex, exchanged explicit pictures. Uh, then the two agreed to meet with the boy, apparently, and fortunately, chickened out and never showed up. So the next day, he started receiving texts uh, from a person claiming to be the boy's father, who was now demanding money that he cover car repairs because the boy had damaged his vehicle, I guess, crushed the this car gets to, weird. Go, to go meet him. If it wasn't him. weird enough. Yeah, so <laughs> that way, it deals to so he goes, oh, I don't want to pay any money to this guy for so the I'm gonna, car. So I'm going to call the FBI. So he contacts the FBI saying he'd been the victim of a scam on Craigslist. So after the police interviewed him specifically about the part where he solicited a teenage boy for sex, they said, let us take a look at your phone, and they went through all the information. And where and is he now? He, well, right now he's in jail. Jail, okay. Yeah, but it's, my favorite part is just where he's like, well, yeah, I was soliciting this underage boy for sex, then all of a sudden his dad wants money. What's up with that? Okay, are you remembering the part, dude, back here where you were soliciting a... Right. So, All right. you know, the only good thing I can find in this is that he was even too stupid to manage this heinous thing, for which I am deeply relieved. Yeah. And on the bright side, he turned himself in and saved us all which a is, little time. This is true. And these are all good things. And energy. Uh, mm -hmm. Coming up next, uh, who doesn't like to drink alcohol at the zoo? <laughs> There's a, a combination. Of, and then the animals join in. That's coming up next. Mm -hmm. 
We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron morning stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud and GephardDaily.com? Did you know you can buy a house with a 600 credit score? Really? We have lenders, we have programs, stuff that's come up in the last couple years, 600. Wouldn't you have to have like 50% down or something though? Nope. Three and a half percent. Where would you start the process on this? Well, Fink and McGregor has a website, 4minutemortgage.com. Just go there, fill it out, up and running. How long until you get back to us? One business day. Whole thing takes about a month, start to finish. Where do you get the down, though, if you're broke? It can be a gift from family, relative, significant other, even your work. Gift, huh? Yeah. You know what that makes me wish? What? Makes me wish I had friends with money. <laughs> All right, so uh, we wanted to talk about this earlier, Equifax, um, because um, people are starting to pile on. Well, especially now with the data breach and everyone's like, oh, crap, okay, and they're thinking, I'm going to go on, I'll get credit How many? monitored. Oh, it was... Unimaginable. 143 million consumers may have been Whoopsie. compromised. Phone numbers, and social so security. A lot of people logically go online. I did. And you put a credit monitoring alert on your account right. saying, please freeze everything if anyone tries to who, open something. Who did we do that with? We did it with TransUnion. Okay. Because if you try to do it with Equifax, who once again are the people who caused the breach in the first place, they will make you sign something agreeing that you will not sue them if you pay to have them monitor your credit. They'll you know, do it for free, but you can't sue them. No, actually, I still think they charge That's a fee. That's ridiculous. In any case, uh, <clears throat> several Utahns have already sued Equifax for $5 billion. This has gone into a uh, class action suit now. Uh, the state of Utah is also joining in on this. Um, Third Attorney state. General, yeah. As of yesterday. That's just of yesterday. Well, here's the irritating thing, uh, and I didn't realize this either. Uh, the lawsuit alleges Equifax knew the data was being breached from May through July, but they didn't report it to the public until September. So they knew oh. four months ago this was happening, oh. and they didn't warn us. Wow. If that's true, they're going to go bye-bye. Yeah. All right, so I want to talk I'm about the, with that. Now, if you think about uh, Utah's Hogle Zoo, um, a lot of the zoos have become creative because they have to because they need to draw people in all season long, all now, different we, seasons. Yeah, we've done fundraisers before for the zoo right. where we've emceed and they've had, they've ice, had cocktail. I, and ice, ice block day where they uh -huh. freeze the good food that the animals like in ice blocks when it's really hot and they throw it to the animals and they play with it and it's really fun. They do Christmas lights during mm -hmm. Christmas. Beautiful. Um, and, and in this case, the, uh, this zoo. This one is, involved cocktails. This one, it, it was a beer festival, 2,000 people at the Lehigh Valley Zoo. Um, I'm not sure where this is, I'm sorry. Anyway, so they had this beer festival at a zoo. Look at them, everybody's drinking. They look happy, look, everybody's they've got the, the women zoo. with the big mugs of uh -huh. stuff. Is that yeah. what we're calling? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, and anyway, during the festivities, and everyone is having a good time, a bobcat escaped from its cage. That seems problematic to me. Now the bobcat has always been there. He was born at the zoo, he's been there for 18 years. He gets out. That's impressive. And you know what happens when you get out of prison? You're only looking for one thing. Two things, hard liquor and wild men. And that's what she was looking for because she'd been in there for 18 years. She tore through the, 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 the beer party and they finally caught her and stuff. But can you imagine, what a great opportunity for some guy to go, hey Bubba, hold my beer. I'm going to wrestle that bobcat. It's going to be great. <laughs> Make sure you video it, put it on YouTube. <laughs> wow. So anyway. Can you imagine having drinking though? You'd be serious, you'd be choking on your beer as this a, bobcat's going a beer fest, tearing through the festival. A beer fest at the zoo. That's really interesting to me. Yeah, but Oh Mr. Bear. It's never gonna be as spicy as it is with a bobcat. This is you true. always gotta throw the bobcat in to make it extra fun. Oh, oh you could spin a wheel on what animal to release. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> what are the partygoers most likely to survive? Tiger. 
Good luck. Okay, so um, all right, let's go to Daisy in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is, of course, brought to you by Think and McGregor. Mortgage is made simple. If you go to think-mcgregor.com, they can give you a whole bunch of options within four minutes of a few questions, and someone will call you on the next business day if you like. And also by Black Diamond Experts. They are experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. Oh, and they have a brand new store now in Ogden. Congratulations. BlackDiamondExpert.com. Daisy, my dear, what's going on? Hello again, everyone. Here's a look at national and world news headlines for Tuesday, September 12th on GebhardtDaily.com. Hurricane Irma may have downgraded to a tropical depression, but it's still causing major problems as it makes its way inland. Power has been knocked out to 60% of Florida, and now Georgia is getting slammed with more than a million people without electricity as of Tuesday morning. Damage assessments from Florida are still pouring in. Five storm-related deaths have been reported so far. The United Nations has imposed a fresh round of sanctions on North Korea. The new measures take direct aim at North Korea's nuclear weapons program, restricting the country's oil imports while banning textile exports. The UN aims to choke off revenue streams used by North Korea to develop nuclear weapons. Observers say these are the toughest US, UN sanctions yet. And five U.S. troops have been wounded in apparent suicide bombing in Afghanistan. The Pentagon says the attack took place Monday when the bomber drove a car full of explosives into an armored convoy near the Bagram Air Base in northern Afghanistan. No word yet on the soldiers' identities or the extent of their injuries. More than 2,400 U.S. troops have been killed in Afghanistan since 2001. That's it for now. For more headlines from across the country and around the world, go to GebhardtDaily.com. Todd and Aaron, back to you. Thank you, Daisy. Okay, Black Diamond Experts. Uh, I'm excited because they just barely opened a brand new store up in Ogden, and it's really a testament to how many people believe in them. And that's neat because they're, they're Black Diamond Experts because they're experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. It's nice to have somebody who basically, whatever goes wrong in your house, they're like, yeah, we can fix that. That's fine. So whatever goes wrong in your house is going to go wrong, and you're going to call Black Diamond Experts, or you're going to go to blackdiamondexpert.com. You're going to say, could you come over and look at the thing that has gone wrong in my house? They will come over. It will be someone who is licensed, bonded, and insured. They will put on the little booties that will come in and treat your house with care and respect. You'll know who you're getting there and that you're comfortable with them in your home with your kids. And then they'll give you a bid. And whatever the bid is, is what you're going to pay when the job is finished to your satisfaction. There won't be any extra creepy little surprise fees and all those little overages and, oh, we didn't know about this thing. Because we've all paid those kind of bills before. And no matter what, you just feel cheated every time you think about it. Well, they don't want that. They want you to be happy with what happened. This is why they keep opening new offices, because people keep liking them and appreciating their work. So if this is something that you're ready for and you need somebody you can count on, I have a big thing about getting a little list of people I can trust for certain things. BlackDiamondExpert.com. All right. I love quizzes. You know how much I love quizzes. This oh, by the way, good morning quiz. to everybody on Facebook. All right. So this is a cool quiz. Where, where does it come from? Um, now, Cosmopolitan. Now, Daisy had talked about this in her news earlier today, but if you hadn't heard about this, there was a Roy High School teacher. This is a college prep class, okay. mind you. All right. And she gave the kids a quiz. Now, I'm this ready. is from a 1981 Dear Abby column. What, so what, I'm personally what? thinking what? if you're really going for something that examines personality traits, I'm not sure I would be picking a Dear Abby quiz from, what is that, 26? Is this to find out? 26 of, years, <clears> 36 years. 36 years ago. If I'm like left-brained or right-brained or something like that. Uh, no, no, no. This is this is whether or not you're a pervert or not. It's a decency quiz that tells you if you're a decent person. Decency and pervert are the same category. I mean, and there's a <clears throat> and one of the moms was the one who actually found out about it because the teacher was like, "Fill this out, put your name on it, and send it back, or you don't get credit." And the, her daughter was like, "This seems really." weird and she said don't turn it in and her daughter Olivia said well if I don't I don't get a grade for the class okay I want to take the quiz it's asking something and it's stuff about this okay okay good. I'm ready and, and once again the name of this class is adult roles in financial literacy which to okay. me doesn't seem to have a lot with it do you smoke pot if you okay. do then you no. take off six decency points no I don't do you, do you drink an alcohol or a beer now and then that's yes. seven yes. decency yes. quizzes yes I do do you drink alcohol or beer every day no I don't okay have you ever passed out from drinking no. And this tells you how, how... I went to college. I'll tell you how dated this is. This is have you ever tried angel dust? Angel and That's dust. 11 indecency points. It's like in the, in that's the, like ecstasy now or something. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hallucinogenics. It's a, yeah. 
Um, have you ever slipped angel dust into someone's drink? You've, so roofied, once it, you've roofied someone? So basically it's asking if you've roofied someone. Now it would be like ketamine or something. Um, do you ever take pills to get high? Uh, do you no. ever take pills to get off a high or to go to sleep? Yeah, I've yes, had NyQuil, to, so I've just lost a lot of decency go, points because I take sleep. NyQuil. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, and while I'm drinking. Have you ever had sex without a contraceptive? Have you had abortions? Have you had more than one abortions? If you're straight, <laughs> would you go kinky to see what it's like? I mean, these are not questions you ask a high school child. Keep going. These are and the these are college kids, by the way. No, these are these are high school kids. Oh, this is horrible. It was a college prep class. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. It's, you get AP credit for it, but it's Roy High School. Oh, my gosh. And this woman puts this... Because <clears throat> this quiz in, and your grade is dependent on it, and it's got, and the thing that offends me is not even the drug and alcohol and the sex questions. It's the fact that it's assigning a morality level to you that has nothing to do with who you are. Right. Like one of the questions was, have you ever been <clears throat> kissed against your will? And if you have, which to me is assault, it takes away two decency points from you. Senator Hatch kissed it's... me on the cheek. You saw it. I thought it was on the lips. You saw it. No. He's a kisser. He hugged me. He, he liked gave me you. a kiss right here. That's when I had long hair. He didn't kiss me. Yeah, I know. It's fine. He liked you better. But it's just questions like this. I'm like, okay, that's so offensive that you would have the nerve to assign a morality and decency level to a child. And it, and it had halfway through it, it's like, you're disgusting, you know, indecent, point of no return. And I'm like, you're really telling a 17-year-old child this is who they are. Yeah. Okay, so number one, it's inappropriate as crap. Number two... You're creating this ugly, toxic atmosphere and assigning a morality level to a child. And number three, essentially with questions like the being forced to kiss against your will, you're, you're basically telling them that more or less date rape and sexual assault are really your fault. So, so far this whole thing seems extraordinarily problematic to me. So the teacher has been suspended. I would suggest she be fired. Get, where did she get the quiz? That's the thing. It's like a, from a 1981 Dear Abby column. Dear Abby, from 1981, 35 years ago. All I can say is that you do angel dust once and you're shamed forever. It's the angel dust. It's the angel it's dust. It's the angel dust. And <laughs> the reefers. <laughs> the reefer madness. I mean, it was... Oh, you know, you know what? There was a question on this. Oh, yeah, yeah, hang yeah, on, yeah. Hang on one second. Hang on. This is how dated, Daisy this is how Daisy dated it is. No. Daisy, come here for a second. Here, here. here sit down. Here, I'm gonna sit like this. You, Hi, honey. you sit down Hi. right there. Look, we're all the same height, and I'm kneeling. Yeah. All right. So we went to the decency test. Yeah. And one of the questions we were talking about this morning, one of the questions was, um, "Have you ever taken your clothes off while yeah. parking?" Yeah. So I'm at yeah I'm at home last night, and I'm I'm looking through the test, and and the question was, "Have you ever taken most of your clothes off while parking?" And okay. So that, apparently, I find out this morning makes perfect sense to you guys. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So I'm at home, right? I read this. And so in England, parking is when you stop your car at the destination you want to go to. Right? Right, right. So I read the question, and I'm so, I'm like, God, is this quiz, like, kinky or esoteric? Or? I'm, I'm at Target. I'm taking most of my clothes off. <laughs> it says, yeah, have you ever? And I'm like, no, when I arrive at work, when I go to Target or home. And then I'm like, woo, let's just undress. <laughs> yeah. So totally confused. And I have this confusing little exchange on. We have a party line where everyone talks right. to each other. right. Everyone at work, and 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 then Bill says something about a submarine, and I'm like, oh, okay, I, I just. And at what point did you clarity? <laughs> so I got in this morning, and Todd's in, and um, and I'm like shouting through to him, and you I, kept reading it over yeah, and um, over. I don't again. understand. Right. And then all of a sudden, like the biggest light bulb that's ever like come to light over my head just goes. And I go, parking, oh. making out in a car, fogging up the windows. The submarine thing was, what? go watch the submarine races. And that was like popular in the 50s. In the 50s. What, what, do you, what do you so call it in, in England? What do yeah, you call what did you it? Call, what did you call where you went somewhere and you made out? Like Take your clothes your mother's off. Lane, well, you just go off and snog. Like, I mean, you might be in a car, you might be in a field. So it's might... net. <laughs> <laughs> In a pasture. In a pasture. In a glen. In, in a, a glen. In a horse barn. <laughs> Obviously, it's all in kind of slightly sort of peasanty, medieval settings. 
Pride and Prejudice. It's that movie. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> In something and diaphanous. You know, when you take your clothes off, yeah, you have to take your diaphanous. Yeah. Like, well, you're actually incredibly constricted. Your bodice, corset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your diaphanous skirt. Like but the... it's not called anything. It's just. I'm getting all tingly. You have to go away. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I just like the fr- I just like the phrase. <laughs> The phrase, just go off and snog. Oh. <laughs> it's like Netflix and, sn- and snog. And snog, yeah. Oh, oh Netflix my gosh. And snog. All right, so um, coming up, uh, Vikings? <gasps> Viking with a massive female leader. Not massive as in body, but or, one of the biggest Viking, one of the biggest Viking cultures, their leader was a female. They just found it out through the burial it's site. Coming up next. Service professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24 hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron morning stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud and gepharddaily.com? All right, so tell me about. Vikings. I've, I've always been fascinated with Vikings. I love Scandinavian Why? culture. Well, Why? no, I love Scandinavian culture. I spent time in Norway on a right. student exchange, and I'm just I'm crazy about the whole place. But Vikings were a really big part of, of the culture because they were some of the earliest explorers that went down into the British Isles. And They're saying that they were like incredible at navigation and stuff far beyond well we're learning more and really more. sophisticated long boats although you still think it's a long boat it's an open boat and you're in the Atlantic during winter but they were good and they took over huge sw- massive swaths of land but in any case um, they're extraordinarily they were an extraordinarily vicious culture they were very powerful they, they were yeah, incredibly yeah. good fighters right but here's the thought that I thought was really cool. They discovered a grave in the Swedish town of Burka. It was chock full of weapons, gaming equipment, two horses. They had buried all of this stuff. It was 10th century AD. Now, so they the, buried the horses so that the person could use it in the next one. Yeah, life. I'm sure the horses are like, well, you're what? Hey, this You're isn't way, right. What? So, but yeah, they bury everything they need to go into the next life with right. them. And, and you know, that they're going to Valhalla, and, and, which is their version of heaven for the warriors and the heroes. But it was interesting. So after they went through all of the stuff, though, they did a DNA analysis and they went through like bone density and blah blah blah. Right. They found out that the mighty warrior, the head of the warrior, with the two dad, horses in the pit, was a woman. Really? No, I thought that was incredibly exciting. And for them, they said this is neat because not only was she a warrior, but the grave suggested she was a really high-ranking w- one. Um, the armor-piercing arrows, two shields, all of the stuff of a professional warrior, and the full set of gaming pieces uh, indicated that she understood tactics and strategy, and that she was probably one of the tre- chief uh, war strategists for the region. See, every time I think of now that I think of this, every time I think of uh, Vikings, and now I think of women. I think of opera, and then I picture the, the very robust woman with the horns going, like that, on stage. No, so, she probably would have been short and, and really dirty face and braids clubbed back on the back of her head to get out of her way. And she probably had some upper body strength because those swords were unbelievably heavy to lift. This is true. So she was probably an extraordinarily sturdy woman. I know when you were saying robust, you were thinking of the bosom. I know perfectly well where your brain was going, but no, this was probably a real sinewy, tough woman. But I just love the fact, though, that in that culture, which is traditionally like, oh, you know, like the Spartans, that they actually had women leaders. That's exciting to me. <laughs> I went for that you went right off the bat. That's precisely thought. where you went, and I know it. Okay, so um, I love these stories, and we've done these before because uh, uh, the, and we're going to continue doing them because it's so cool. And this is at Texas A&M University. Now, um, usually you think if you've been to a large school, it's kind of impersonal. And that is a big freaking school. And you're, it's kind of impersonal. And the teacher doesn't really know your name. When they call on you, they're looking at a sheet going, uh, Bob, right? And then you ask your question. Well, in this case, I had a single mom. And she texted the, the professor. And I guess this is a little closer than some schools or classes. Yeah, she was in the Mays Business School, right. uh, and uh, Henry, Henry Musoma, Musoma was her was her teacher, her and professor. She said, she said, I don't have a babysitter, so I can't come into class today. Can I make up the work, or can you send me what covers, were, chapters we're supposed to look at? Instead, what he did said, he say? He said, please bring him. That'll be great. Right. And so this is Dr. Henry Musoma, who is an incredibly brilliant man, and... Uh, 
he stood up there and he was teaching the class and she had to take notes. It was pretty crucial that she knew what she was doing. Look at he him. held the baby the whole freaking time. I am so in love with this man. And you and look, he's got a little sock dangling off his little toddler foot. And he kept going and just uh, did the whole lecture. and, and The way people should. Pe taking notes. And, and this is the thing I loved about her. She wrote about this and she said, being a single mom is so challenging, but it's people like Dr. Henry Masoma that make my life just a tiny bit easier. And it's true. When you're a single mom and you don't have the resources where you can go and put the child somewhere, what are you supposed to do? And right. when is your chance to go to college and, and better yourself and get a degree where you can take care of your family? Exactly. And so for him to go, no, this is you, you need to be here today, and I'm going to help you out. I just he's, love him for he's that. He's the human being that we all should be. Dr. Henry Musoma. So I took, listen, I, I showed you at the beginning about fishing, don't run it yet, um, that I took my son, uh, and we went and did some man time because girls are stinky. And uh, we left them at home, and we went up in the trailer up into the Uintas. By the way, there was frost on the truck uh, windshield the next morning. And Zoe I, and I got a and pedicure I, and went swimming. I always wanted to do this, and I, it's happened a lot. But So what I did is I thought, you know what, I can find. And by the way, these fish survived the entire summer of fishermen. So they're cunning. they're cunning. These are the sneaky, cunning brook trout. So what I did is I went down, and I did one cast, and I got one fish. All right, now start showing it. All right. Oh, did you see the one little fish. flop? There he yeah. is. One cast, one fish. Caught it on, caught it on the video here. And what kind of fish is it? It is a brook. It was really trout. very pretty with the like the there little streaks. Brook trout. Look at like tropical fish. Now the question is, frying pan or freedom? Frying pan or freedom? Oh, tell me you let him go. I'm gonna Look make a decision. He, and he tried so hard what? to escape. What? <gasps> I know. What's he doing? That little brook trout and then I thought you know what let's test the water let's put the camera in I'm surprised he didn't try to flee I know maybe he was just catching his breath I or don't something no he's just hanging out and this is the cool part I mean this is like how often do you get to do this oh that's <laughs> right that's so cool isn't that amazing there he is he's not hooked or anything he's just hanging out oh look at his cute little white stripes on his fins I know that's amazing so anyway if you're so gonna go to the just his breath or something yeah. and you guys have a great day it's a time here in the studio again